Well, welcome back to the Tell Me More podcast, where we invite you to be a part of real conversations with real women as we navigate the normal thoughts, feelings, and events in life as Christians. I'm Jess McKinney, one of your co-hosts. I'm Lydia Florence. And I'm Sarah Hopkins. I forgot for a second which order we go. I didn't know. I was was just watching. Looking back and forth. (laughs) That's great. I don't sit in the middle very often. I know. This is kind of cool. I like it. Don't worry. I brought my readers today. Good for you, though. We're at that stage. I'm sure I'm right behind your sister. Don't you worry. (laughs) It's fine. I kind of want bejeweled ones, if I'm honest. Oh, yeah. You should. If you start wearing the little neck clasp thing, though, so that they can sit down, I mean, that will be... Mm, Don't put that'd it be money. Me. Oh no, I think you would. I think you should. I do make fun of Tyler, one of the guys on our staff, for his clicker readers. <laughs> oh yeah, he's got the dad. Wait, <laughs> what's a clicker reader? Oh, they literally <laughs> are magnetic and they click together in yeah. front of you. <laughs> nice. I saw him when we were driving the other day. I dropped the kids off at school and I was driving home really quick. And he was getting on New Circle and they were hanging from his roof. Yep. Mirror. And they're like, red. Oh, they're man. cherry red, which is <laughs> that's really not funny. Tyler. <laughs> But you know what? God bless you, Ariane. We love you. And we do. that's so I, funny. I think she inspires him to be a little spicy. <laughs> my my father in law loves those things though. He asked for some for Christmas and they like he loves them. You do start getting to the point where you're like, I I know this is the worst ever. But it is so convenient. Right. I can and it see. is so helpful. Mm-hmm. So I feel like when I get to the point of needing readers. That it's not going to be embarrassing for me because I've had b- bad eyesight my entire life. Right. Yeah. Like I started wearing glasses when I was little. Yeah. And so yeah. I wear contacts now most of the time. Yeah. And I'm like, whatever. Yeah. Eyesight's eyesight. I'd rather be able to see. Right. <laughs> uh, when I was a kid, like wearing glasses was super made fun of. Yeah. And then it became super popular. And I was like, well, dang it. I got LASIK, y'all. Oh, now I can't wear You got LASIK. I did. I didn't know that. I, I did. That. It is awesome. I highly recommend it. I had terrible eyesight also. I thought yeah. I wouldn't be a candidate for mm-hmm. it. But it was, which is great. I highly think recommend it. men are more attractive in glasses. I mean, it, de- it depends mm, on the glasses, that. but then they take them off and you're like, ooh. It is funny. <laughs> Superman. How- I, I'm going for Clark Kent. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. It's funny how you can see somebody wearing glasses, though, and that's how you know them, and they take them off, and mm-hmm. you're like, what happened to your face? I don't, wait, I don't even recognize you. Listen, you put, so, you put a jacket with some elbow patches and some glasses on, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, well, the great thing about it is that you can you can look smart without actually being smart. That's true. That's true. (laughs) Well, I missed the boat, so now all I have are my computer Uh, glasses every once in a while. They look great. That is funny. (laughs) Oh my gosh! All right. Well, we are continuing on in our um, season. Oh my word, y'all! I'm losing it in our season right now, and we're reading through the book of James. And so uh, today we were talking all about wisdom. Wisdom, mm-hmm. which is something the Bible talks about a whole lot yep. and something I hope to have one day that I am not sure that I do currently. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, so we had a little quick, fun opening question uh, just to share some of the things that have been told to you over time that really made an impact. Wise statements from wise people that you can remember that you're like, man, that really just. Yes. I'm going to be honest. Uh, you took that in a much deeper direction than I thought about it in. Because I was like, I don't know. What little morsels of advice have I been given that have proved? Uh, <laughs> or funny. I was going to say, the first thing I thought of was. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> don't get a tattoo if you haven't wanted it for at least a year. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's a good piece of wisdom. That's yeah. good advice. Because. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be honest. I've done both. I've gotten an impulse tattoo, yeah. and I've I've had another tattoo that I waited yeah. longer than a year just to make sure that I still wanted it, mm-hmm. and I did end up still getting it. But it saved me from a lot of mm-hmm. um, tattoos that I considered getting over the years mm-hmm. that I'm very thankful that I do not have mm-hmm. now. Yeah. So the song lyrics you thought were really impactful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or you know, honestly. As a 16-year-old, when I had some unsavory friends mm. and, um, you know, was hanging out with people that I had no business hanging out with, I could have made some choices. Yep. And I'm really glad that I didn't yeah. because at some point somebody told me that. And I was like, you know, for whatever reason. That's good advice. I, I did abide by that one. Yeah, that's and, good advice. It yeah. applies also to like, like I've heard that in shopping. Mm-hmm. Like if you really want something and it's like outside of what you would normally spend or whatever, what you have allotted in your budget, sleep on it. Mm-hmm. Maybe sleep on it for a week. And yeah. if you still and want then it. then if you still yeah. want it and it's still available and you have the money for it, it's something that you're probably going to use. Yep. I've always. Well, yeah. And as a girl, one of the things that my mom told me 
way early on too, was if you're shopping, you have to try things on, make sure you do your hair before you go shopping. Because if you don't like the way that your hair looks, you're not going to like anything that you try on, even if otherwise you might have liked it. Like when you look in the mirror, you're just, you're going to not feel great about yourself because you don't like the way your hair looks. Like you feel like you're having a bad day. So bother to do your hair if you have to go try something on. Like if you're, you know, shopping for a specific thing, because that'll give you a better picture of like, you'll be less critical of yourself. Or if you're having a terrible hair day and you try something on and you love it, you know, you're really going to love it. That's true too. Yeah. (laughs) I like that. I need (laughs) this. I had someone tell me one time (laughs) I was, I don't know, explaining some Sarah wisdom that was not biblical (laughs) and about reasons I was behaving the way I was. Mm -hmm. And the this older, wiser, wonderful woman looked at me and said, can I just say, tell you something? I said, yeah. She said, you need to get over yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that mm-hmm. one. Yeah. I, I think about that all the time. Yep. You need to get over yourself. It's a good one. Yeah. I was telling a 13-year-old that last night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Who ca- get over it's it. It's really hard at that age, too. It is. Because you're yeah. so wrapped up in, like, so many things that are changing around you. Yep. And you care so much about what other people think. Yep. I just Ooh, wanted her hard. to start questioning, like, who yeah. does care? Mm. Yeah. Why do I care what that girl thinks? Because mm-hmm. she's mean Yeah, all of the time. Yeah. yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. My grandmother, um, one of the things that I learned from her was, like, basically don't sweat the small stuff. That's not yeah. how she put it. Yeah, but, she had. You know. <laughs> but, I mean, she was, like, she didn't worry about things. Yeah. I mean, like, she cared about things and she was passionate about them. But if it was outside her control, she was just like, okay. Yeah. yeah. What's my response? And I was like, that's so good. I need to really control my response and not worry about the rest. Which is difficult for me a lot of times, but that was good wisdom from her. Also, I don't know about y'all, but currently, do y'all remember us doing the words of wisdom way back when? John did these videos. I was, <laughs> I was not here for that. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought of. I'm sure we we've need to got find them somewhere. Those. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sounds funny. <laughs> oh, it was great. There was one about bacon. I remember that. I'll have to ask him about I wish it. We could splice that in <laughs> I know. to the end of this on YouTube. If I can find it, <laughs> it's coming in the archive somewhere. I'm oh, sure. I know. I know. It was so funny. I remember those videos, and I do not know why, but that just stuck in my brain. So there we are. Okay. Well, we are talking today, like I said, about wisdom, um, and we're going to kind of jump into what James is talking about, like what what marks a life full of wisdom versus one that is full of other things that mm-hmm. sometimes. Uh, disguise themselves as wisdom or what the world would call our wisdom. So um, Mm -hmm. before we get going, why don't we pray and then we'll read the scripture and then we have a little um, backup scripture we're going to read. So we're going to go a little off book today, but it's going to be great. All right. I'll pray. Father, I'm grateful to be sitting here at this table with these women. I'm grateful for the women who are listening today. Um, Lord, I just want to ask very plainly that you would give us wisdom. Um, You tell us that Um, that we can ask for that and that you'll give it to us and that you don't begrudge us for asking. And so I'm asking, Lord, that you would impart your wisdom to us, that we wouldn't be puffed up by our own knowledge or uh, latching on to anything that the world says is wisdom, but that we would be um, humbly tuning in to what it is that you want to teach us. Uh, Lord, we love you and we praise you and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So today we are going to read James Three thirteen through eighteen, um, and again we're using the NIV. You can use whatever version you prefer, but that's where we're working from today. So here we go. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done, and the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacekeepers, nope, peacemakers, Mm -hmm. who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Be very clear about that. So sorry. (laughs) Peacekeepers are not peacemakers. Peacemakers. (laughs) 
And our other one, um, I was talking to Jess and Lydia as we got started because I've been reading Proverbs this summer and I kind of do it by the day. So whatever the chapter number is or Mm -hmm. whatever date it is, Mm -hmm. that's the chapter I'll read in Proverbs because it just kind of, there's 31. Mm -hmm. So it's helpful. Um, And it's in Proverbs 9 and it's talking about two different types of women, Lady Wisdom and Lady Folly. And just the, the difference that these two women bring mm-hmm. were, for me, really jarring this week. Um, but it starts with um, Proverbs 9. One, wisdom, Lady Wisdom, has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared, and she has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city, let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, come, eat my food, and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways, and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. And then you scroll down to, uh, let's see, verse 13, and starting there, going through verse 18. Lady Folly is an unruly woman. She is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by. Who go, on, who go straight on their way. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know that the dead are there, that her guests are deep in the realm of the dead. Yeah. <laughs> and I loved it because you have this picture of wisdom being prepared. Yeah. And she has gone out of her way and mm-hmm. not only has she prepared her home or her space whatever yeah. her her situation she is then going out yeah. to the people sending her servants calling them in mm-hmm. and then lady folly doesn't do anything steals everything mm-hmm. and then just waits for you to come by so she can get you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and just the sl- it's uh, i think somewhere else in proverbs it says that she is loud mm-hmm. and just that girl, you yeah. know, that's just, yeah. and I thought, ugh, I'm usually the second one, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to be, I want to be the first one. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that woman is, she, she's yeah a force to be reckoned with. Well, mm-hmm. and she is using what she has and what she's learned to bless other people mm-hmm. rather than to do it for herself yep. and her own and game. And to ensnare them. Yeah. Yes. Which is a lot of what James is talking about as well in here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just think that's an interesting distinction. I, I, I'm going to ask you all what stood out to you, but I also Mm -hmm. just wanted to talk about the, I underlined the bitter envy and selfish ambition part and then Mm -hmm. boasting about it, which sounds like a really weird thing until you dissect the, cause you're like, why, why would I boast about being envious of someone? That seems silly. Mm -hmm. And then you think about, well, actually like what the world tells us is if you want something, Go get it. Work Mm -hmm. hard to get it Mm -hmm. and tell everybody. Right. Yeah. And that's the same thing. That's literally us boasting about our selfish ambition and our envy and our comparison. Mm -hmm. So we think, like, I think it's easy to read this and go, well, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I absolutely do. So that really, like, hit me hard. That was a little bit of a gut punch. I was like, whew, okay. Every little thing that I say, like, is is this good? Is this from the Lord or is this really about me? Yeah, the boasting thing is like... Good or bad, we as human beings just want to be recognized mm-hmm. for things. Yeah. We want people to acknowledge either that something that we've done is really good yes. mm-hmm. or we want someone to acknowledge like, oh, you're facing something really hard mm-hmm. or you're – and we just – we want mm-hmm. – like we want to be seen. Yeah. And yeah. the positive side of that is that our creator sees us, knows us, and loves us in the mm-hmm. deepest sense, but that can be manipulated by Satan to – Becoming boastful of like, I have to have recognition for everything in my Mm -hmm. life or it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 And there's a lot of scripture about the things that you do in quiet that no one else sees, but that Mm -hmm. really are glorifying to the Lord. So, also at the very end of that, verse 14, uh, but if you you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, don't deny the truth. Yes. Be honest that me coming to you guys and being like, Mm -hmm. I'm Mm -hmm. super jealous or I'm bitter about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is, 
a freedom mm-hmm. that is then started yeah. for the Lord to remove that from my heart. And if someone I'm honest to say, about it. Get over yourself. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> get over yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay. What else stood out to you in either this or the Proverbs passage? Um, to me, in James 3, peace just comes up several times yep. towards the end. Mm. Um, so there were some things that I chased down with that. But it, again, when you see a word, or a phrase that's repeated in a short amount of time. That's usually something to pay attention to. And I just noticed that towards the end, um, there's peace loving, peacemakers, and peace are all mentioned within two verses. So that was something that stood out to me. Yeah, that's great. I do love that picture in verse 17 because it's not like mm-hmm. I don't I don't feel like James sets us up to go, this is what you don't want to be. Yeah. And then just leaves it. He's yeah. Like, no, this <laughs> is literally the picture of what it looks like to have wisdom from the Lord. Yeah. All these things. Yep. And that's a lot. But also, I mean, it helps me just to have that, these very detailed things going, okay, am I producing good fruit? Is, am I full of mercy towards others? Mm-hmm. Am I actually sincere in mm-hmm. what I'm saying right now? Those are all, I don't know, those are good things to live by, mm-hmm. good yeah. truths to live by. And we hit on it a little bit and joked, but there is a drastic difference between peacemakers and peacekeepers. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think w- <laughs> women <Whoopsie>. especially. <laughs> no, I think, I think it's good. <laughs> women especially will say, will kind of go, well, I'm a peacekeeper. Mm-hmm. That is not what the Bible calls you to be. Peacekeepers right. do not confront the problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just want everyone to be happy. And if that means that we let wrong go, then we're going to let that go so we can keep the peace. Right. Peacemakers are negotiators. Mm-hmm. They are holding up the truth, but then also going, okay, what can you do? Yeah. What when a lot doing? of time peacekeepers aren't really keeping peace, they're just keeping quiet and right. yes, they're avoiding they're, conflict. Yeah, yes. they're avoiding conflict. Yes. And you know, we've done a podcast episode on conflict before, but peacemakers, that doesn't mean that you sit back and it's not passive at all. It often requires having Mm -hmm. difficult conversations. And like you said, at the center of that is knowing what is true and standing up for it. Yeah. So, yeah. When you look at, I mean, Jesus example of this, like you think of the many times that he was sitting amongst the disciples who are literally arguing about the stupidest things, Mm -hmm. like who's better. Yeah. For example, which I cannot fathom arguing about (laughs) in front of our Lord and Savior, but Hey, I don't know. <laughs> um, but when you think about that, he didn't handle that with like, oh, well, I don't know. I just, uh, mm-hmm. maybe he didn't placate. He wasn't angry. He just diffused it with like simple statements, very wise statements. Mm-hmm. So when you look at his example, I think that's just that's just a good way to go. Okay, that's putting it into perspective. Even, even in the temple, like I think about Jesus getting angry. It was a righteous anger and it was to make a point and he's our Prince of Peace. So yeah. mm-hmm. there are times when it requires action and when it requires you to stand up for things. And there are times when it requires you to calmly listen and say something and maybe times when you shouldn't say anything at all. Yeah. And I think truth brings, for me, so much more of a sense of peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because even if I don't like it, yeah, it gives me that foundation or that weighted blanket that I yeah. need in order to... Mm -hmm. sort through whatever chaos is going on. Yeah. 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 I mean, Jesus is our Prince of Peace, and we have to keep the perspective that of all the kinds of peace that we need, what we really need is peace with God. We need to be made right with God, and Jesus made a way for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And when that's the truth that we live in, then we can act and speak out of that peace. Mm-hmm. And I think that that has ripple effect, effects. Like it says in verse 18, peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Mm-hmm. When you're when you're living out of the truth that I have peace with God because of what Jesus did on my behalf, yeah. then that you get to reap a harvest of righteousness. And I'll just go ahead and throw this in there because this is the one of the trails I kind of chased down with this passage was in verse 17, um, it says, The wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure, then peace-loving. And that was really interesting to me. I was like, peace-loving, because we, you know, just talked about the difference between peacemaking and peacekeeping. But what about peace-loving? And so I did a little research, and I found out that the word that's used for peace-loving is only used one other time in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And that's in Hebrews 12.11, which says this. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a 
harvest of righteousness and peace for those who've been trained by it. Mm. So that is to say, again, with the, there is something that comes out of this piece and specifically it's connecting it to a harvest of righteousness. Both passages use that same terminology. So to be peace loving and to be peacemaking can be a discipline. That's yeah. part of what Hebrews 12 is talking about right there. Um, but there is, there is a harvest that comes out yeah. of that. And yeah. I think that it can kind of be translated either way here in James of you're reaping a harvest of righteousness might be like righteousness in and of itself is what, you know, is being harvested, or it can be the fruits of righteousness. So what comes out of righteousness even. Um, So that was something interesting that I learned from this. That was interesting that they use the exact same language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it links back perfectly. I mean, James is reiterating what he said at the beginning of his letter Mm -hmm. of, your deeds will show. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your good works are evidence of your salvation. Yeah. And when you see that, when, if you think about what he is saying about being compassionate or mm-hmm. con- being considerate and submissive and full of mercy, mm-hmm. think about that in the context of my relationships. Mm-hmm. Am I considerate of the people yeah. in my life? Am I submissive yeah. one to another? Yeah. Because that's what being a follower of Jesus calls me to. Mm-hmm. I'm not married, but that doesn't mean that I don't practice submission in other sure. areas. Yeah. I think we only talk about it a lot in marriage, yeah. but it is it is necessary in every relationship, oh, a absolutely. mutual submission to one another. Yeah. And so what does that look like? Mm-hmm. And am I practicing that with my friends and yeah. my family and doing that? Yeah. yeah. I think that's good because he, he does say at the very beginning of it, um, let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility. Mm-hmm. Like it's not just your good deeds because anybody – we talked about that last time or two times ago. Anybody can just do good things. Yeah. But the fruit that the Spirit creates in you and that is seen by others is done in humility rather than, hey, look at me and look at these great things that I've done. Or even in your spirit feeling great about what you've done or not. Like all of those things. It, I just think that's really interesting. There's there's a heart posture in all of this that yeah. we absolutely have to have. Yeah, I mean, in verse 17, it says, wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure. Yes. That's yep. what it says. First yeah. of all, yeah. it's pure. It's coming from the right heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And coming from heaven. Yeah. It's not going to yes. be corrupted. corrupted. Right. It's going to be, Yeah. You, you can tell a difference. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is it self-serving? Is it getting me what I want? Or is it, this is all others focused. Yes. This little, yeah. this is how you know. Yeah. And when I am living out of my own Sarah created wisdom, it is not others focused. Yeah. It is Sarah get ahead focused. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's yeah. like, that's how you know when the Holy Spirit's in the driver's seat instead mm-hmm. of you is when it does not become about you anymore because we can't just muster up this like heavenly right. wisdom <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> that is something that the Holy Spirit has to do in our hearts. And that requires, it talks about submission too. That requires, you know, letting him be the one who's taking the wheel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've talked a lot about these characteristics that he's identified, but one of the questions that we had was which of these things seems the most counterintuitive which I think is a really interesting question because this is a laundry list of things and mm-hmm. it's hard. Um, so what are the things that when you look at this, you're like, I mean, I struggle with that one for sure. Mm-hmm. Being considerate. Yeah. Honestly, because yeah. I, I am easily selfish. Yeah. And so to truly be considerate of someone mm-hmm. and not – so that I get something out of sure. it so that they behave in a way that I want them to mm-hmm. or respond in a way that I want them to towards me favorably. Yeah. But yeah. just to be considerate of their feelings mm-hmm. yeah. or of their situation or th- and to have the, the – th- to think through that. Yeah. 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 That's the one That's I struggle great. with the worst. That's good. Most yeah. words. Yeah. Same. I struggle with words. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> I want to read through that list again just so that the listeners can hear those characteristics of God's wisdom that James identifies, which are pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Mm -hmm. I think for me, uh, considerate and sincerity are the two that stand out for me because I just – I know the dirt of my own heart Mm -hmm. and I know that when I'm not letting the Holy Spirit take the lead – that like those are the first things to go. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I can become manipulative or half-hearted or whatever. 
But the sincere thing, I think, stands out to me in some ways because I'm in ministry. And I have found that sometimes, especially when I'm fatigued, it can be hard for me to be Mm -hmm. sincere or to even like to act out of actual love right. rather yeah. than duty. Yeah. yeah. Um, and sometimes, sometimes I, I am, you know, doing the things that ministry requires because I love Jesus and because I'm just trusting that my love of him and his love for me is going to then create love for other people. Yeah. But even in that, sometimes I falter and mm-hmm. I'm just like, well, this is just my job to do something mm-hmm. and I can be insincere. And so sometimes that's really counterintuitive to me and I have to just reorient my heart. Yeah, no, I think that's good. I, I agree with all of that. I also think the word impartial stood out to me, maybe not in the sense that that we think of, um, cause I, I don't know that I struggle as much to look at everyone the same, excluding myself. <laughs> However, I know my own like struggles and my own journey and the things that I have done and the, like the ways that I've worked hard towards something or whatever. And I think that informs my view on everyone else far too much sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I'm unable to remain unbiased towards my own experience, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's difficult, um, and I'm trying to think of an example, but, like, there are times where, you know, I'm sitting there maybe seeing someone struggle with someone or hearing them struggle with it, and all I'm thinking about is the things that I'm dealing with. Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I need to be able to set that aside right now because this is not serving them. This is focusing on myself. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I mean. So that word, I may be interpreting it wrong, but that's the word that really stuck out to me because I was like, I I probably really need to focus on that. And I think impartial and sincere are together for that reason. Because if I am unable to be impartial and set aside my own stuff in that moment, then my response is not going to be a sincere one. Mm-hmm. It is going to be about me. Yeah. So. You know. Well, and it again, going back to what he set up earlier in his letter, not treating someone better than someone else Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. they have something similar as you. They have same giftings or Or you can get something from them. Or you can get something from them. And so keeping that in line, especially within the church. Mm -hmm. I don't expect anyone outside of the church to act in this way. I would be surprised if they did. But in the church, you you just can't. Mm -hmm. We don't have that option. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like one thing that might be helpful to touch on is just like identifying how do we tell when something is false wisdom and when something is true wisdom? Because sometimes false wisdom, you know, puts on a pretty good mask. Mm -hmm. And uh, Charles Spurgeon, who I love to quote, (laughs) 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 once observed, um, he, he said one time that discernment or wisdom is not knowing the difference between right and wrong. It's knowing the difference between right and almost right. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what this passage teaches or what I'm just seeing come up is that the biggest identifying factor of how do I know whether something is true wisdom or something is false wisdom is, is this ultimately self-serving? Is this making personal gain Mm -hmm. someone's highest goal? Or is it done out of a humility of Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get something from this. It doesn't elevate me. It doesn't do me any personal favors. Like, this wisdom is ultimately coming from heaven and not something of me. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest difference in being able to identify what true wisdom is and what false wisdom is, is to what end? Like, yeah. is it to the end of my own personal gain of, you know, or someone else's, you know, when you're trying to figure out is what this person's saying yeah. true or not is, is this to make me just feel, feel better about something or is this to get me something? Is this to give me a leg up in some way against someone else? Or is this pointing me towards greater humility, a life that looks more like Jesus? You know, I think that's the... Yeah. It just kind of makes me think of what Scott was talking about this past weekend. Like, who are you worshiping Mm -hmm. in what you're doing or what you're saying? Because I think there are times where we may do something, like serve someone else, and it does benefit us, 
but that's not the reason. Like I would do yeah. it even if it didn't yeah. because I want to glorify the Lord. So I think sometimes like, you know, we've talked about the desires of your hearts and things like that. And I think the Lord does give us those things when we approach him in humility. But I, I think we kind of have to filter it through. Am I doing this because I want to worship the Lord mm-hmm. or am I doing this because I'm I'm getting something out of it? And would I do it? If I knew I wouldn't get anything out of it, because my answer might be different, which is not great. I don't know. Yeah, I think like, and that's a hard thing to do. Like, like I'm just thinking about practical things in life and like, okay, (laughs) let's say that you want to donate to a cause. You want to donate to somebody who's going on the mission field or you want to donate to your friend who's working on, you know, wanting to adopt a child. That is amazing. That's a really good thing. What if you did it anonymously? Yes. Like... Yeah. Is that a way that you've tried to stretch yourself to say, I'm not going to get anything from this. I don't want any recognition. Yeah. I'm just going to do it anonymously. Yeah. Or when was the last time you used your gifts or you used your practical skills in a way that you didn't receive any payment for mm-hmm. or that took a significant amount of time and required you to sacrifice mm-hmm. and you didn't get yeah. anything from it yeah. other than like, yeah. I think those are some real life application pieces of there's things like that that we should actually be taking to heart and to hand. Like, yeah. what does this actually look like in our life? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when we talk about serving around here, I mean, I think that's another great example because we have loads of people who serve at our church mm-hmm. and they give up their time to do so. Yep. And they do not receive a single thing in return. Yeah. Now, I do think the Lord blesses people with community and things mm-hmm. out of that. Yes. Definitely. But that's not why they got into it. Mm-hmm. But they're they not getting to serve the, the accolades exactly. that yeah. you may get yes. because you killed it during that song. Sure. Yeah. But they're yeah. not recognizing yeah. that I got to enjoy that song because someone was holding my screaming kid. Right. Yeah. They yes. know it. Yes. But that volunteer yeah. Yeah. is not known to the rest of the congregation yeah. that that family yeah. got exactly. to experience that. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a cool thing about our church that we have so many people who want to do that. Yes. It's a good mark of of that Mm servant-heartedness. Yeah, and I can't remember the reference because I'm bad at references, so sorry. (laughs) But I know that there's a verse, and I can look it up later, that says that the Lord will reward what you've done in secret. And um, I think the way I interpret that is that that reward is ultimately uh, like our heavenly reward. And I do think that there there are certain ways that the Lord is going to gift and bless people who were nameless servants in the church or people who just got very little or no recognition at all for the way that they served God and served people yeah. here on earth that in heaven is going to be oh, yeah. a, a whopper of a reward. I don't right. know what it is, yes. but I believe the Bible when it says yeah. that. And so that that is something that's a theme that's taught throughout scripture. So yeah. yeah. That's great. Sorry, I was taking a drink of coffee. All good. Ooh. All right. Um, we've hit on most of the questions that we had. What else out of this that you're like, we really need to address that and talk about? The only other thing, sorry, I keep talking no, and great. talking. The it's only great. other thing I thought of as well in helping distinguish what's true wisdom, what's false wisdom, mm-hmm. is look what comes out of it. Is what comes out of it disorder and chaos yeah. or is what comes out of it peace? Yes. Because this yes. passage talks about peace. That keeps coming up over and over. Yeah. And so um, that will also be a really good marker for you to help identify. Is this something – that has led to a greater peace or is it something that has turned, you know, somebody's world or life upside down and backwards? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I had written down that counterfeit wisdom essentially promises to give us all the desires of our heart, Mm -hmm. which of course, (laughs) which is how that verse usually gets spoken. Yes. Yes, The Lord will give me everything my heart desires, but, and I, what a load of bull honky. Exactly. <laughs> when Prosperity. I learned to read that as the Lord will give me what my heart needs to desire. Exactly. And will make my heart desire what, what he is desires. in line. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. When in, in line with what he desires. Yes. That yeah. changed that verse for me mm-hmm. because yeah. while the things that I do desire are not bad necessarily. Right. Yeah. That, and I can still ask for them. Mm-hmm. It might not be what his desire for me is. And so that submission to his authority and his sovereignty in my life. Yep. That has been, woo, you talk about having to confront that in the last Mm -hmm. few months going, okay, if this is who you say you are, I'm calling you out on the mat because I need this. Right. 
and I need this from you because I don't have it here. Yeah. And I'm going to trust that it's going to be better from you mm-hmm. because that's your MO. Yep. But it's your help my unbelief. When David yes. wrote that, yeah, because I think it was David. Yeah, it was in the Psalms. <laughs> Wait, which which thing? <laughs> that that you will help my unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief. Is that I mean, David? no. Who was it? I mean, maybe David said something similar, but that was the man who came to Jesus wanting oh, him right. to. In Mark. Yeah. In yeah. What, what, was David? what is it? Mark 6. Mark 9. Mark 9. Nice. Nice. I just well got it upside done. down. What did David. Well done. David was. <laughs> no, no. David was asking for forgiveness, even for the things he didn't know that he needed forgiveness for. Oh, That's yes. what he did. Mm-hmm. I knew there was something yes. he didn't know. Um, but yes. That. Well, and that's wise too, is to ask the yeah. Lord, like, God, I'm going to confess. I don't even know how we got on this, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to confess the things that I know I've done wrong, but Lord, forgive me for all of the things that I don't, I'm right. too stupid to even yes. know yeah. that I've sinned. Yeah. Whether that's, yep. you know, big things or little peccadillos, Lord, forgive me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think David, as whiny as he could be sometimes, he did have wisdom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. He kind of. He was not he afraid me. to ask the hard questions either. No. He, he said, "Okay, God, whatever's inside me that needs to be gone, tell me about it." Yep. Which is hard to do. So. Yep. And he went back to the Lord in wisdom. Yes. Like, yeah. That was even in his sin. Yeah. Over and over. That's what I love about him. Yeah. Even though, again, he annoys me, but I love <laughs> that he was so in in step with his Creator. Yeah. That he did not allow his sin mm-hmm. yeah. to keep him from coming to the Lord right. over and over. And I I have prayed that recently of mm-hmm. here we are again, same story, same sin. Yeah. Do not yeah. let me walk away from you. Yeah. Because I'm this stupid. <laughs> yeah. One last little piece of encouragement, and this is just to encourage the women, is back in what was that, April, March, when I got to preach about yes. womanhood? April. Part of the study that came out of that was just I noticed throughout Scripture that the only the only times that wisdom is ever personified, mm-hmm. it is always as a woman. Yes. Now, that's not everything, but it's not nothing. Yeah. It is it, God did that on purpose. Sweet. And, of course, men can have wisdom and are wise. And, you know, this, so this is not to ne- negate that. But I do think that there's a thread throughout Scripture that affirms the particular wisdom of women yeah, and that that is something that we should lean into and ask God mm-hmm. to help cultivate in us because it doesn't come from ourselves. We right. know that. We want God's wisdom. We want heavenly wisdom, not our own stuff. Yeah. But I think he has created us in a special way to be extra attuned to that. Mm-hmm. So this week as you're you know, thinking about what this looks like, just ask the Lord for wisdom and be encouraged that as a woman, mm-hmm. I think that God created you to not just be able, but that in fact He wants to give you that as yeah. one of His own characteristics. Yeah. That is part of the way that you reflect Him to the world. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. That's good. I think I would also just review this list on your own of the characteristics that we read out of um, godly wisdom and see if you can't identify the ones where maybe you need to do some heart work because that was really good for me this week to work mm-hmm. through. So yeah. um, that might be a good challenge as well. But uh, we'll wrap up with this very short scripture today. <laughs> and we'll be back um, on our next episode and we'll jump into chapter four, finally, of James. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Good see stuff. See you later.